Uh, today I'll be reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath been ordained that we should walk in them. All right. Well, good morning and good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Morning, it is, it is. Uh, we spent uh, uh, a few hours yesterday, uh, went kayaking down the Blue River there, Milltown. Some of you have been there, know exactly where that's at, but that's the first time I've ever been kayaking in my entire life. Can you believe that? And uh, pe people saying, you know, are you going to go back? And I was like, yeah, it was good. But we did that, and I thought it reminded me a lot of our vacation in just a whole bunch of ways. Not going to go into it all today. Maybe that's a time for another sermon sometime. But they, they were similar in a lot of different ways. I mean, we took our two, two youngest boys, Zach and Easton, with us. And we didn't hear, you know, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? But we did hear, are we done yet? Are we done yet? Are we done yet? <laughs> I was like, wow, this is, this is just like vacation. And, and just like vacation, you know, when we went to Myrtle Beach here a few weeks ago, looking at the map and, you know, from, from, from Shoals to South Carolina, I was just looking at it and it said, you know, you're looking at probably about a, you know, 10, 11 hour trip uh, to make it. Uh, somehow it took us over 15 uh, hours uh, to make it to the beach. And, and the same with this, this, this kayaking trip. The, the nice little map said that it was a two, maybe three hour trip on the water. And I'm thinking, hmm, easy peasy. Uh, somehow it took us over six hours, <laughs> six hours yesterday. And so I'm thinking, wow, there's a, and, and I know, you know, again, just like vacationing and going, it, it was the bathroom breaks that did it, right? And so, and, and so you know, and I'm thinking, how can that be? I mean, there's, you know, there's no welcome center along the riverbanks, but yet it just, right? And the only difference, I will say this, the only difference uh, with the kayaking trip was I didn't have to spend any money on that trip. No restaurants, no vending machines, no hotels, right? So... But there were some times I was like, wow, this is really nice. I mean, you know, when everybody was like behind me or particularly when everybody was in front of me and I was alone and it was quiet and peaceful and God's creation, I was like, wow, this is a little glimpse of heaven, right? And so it was good. But uh, we are continuing our series about heaven, everlasting life the afterlife. Uh, this is kind of our third installment. And, and today we're going to focus on rewards, um, our heavenly rewards. And we don't talk about that, at least I don't, a lot. I think this is maybe the first time that I've really dived into the scriptures to see what God has to say about rewards in heaven. Because, you know, most of us think, hey, just get me there, right? You know, just just get me there and spend eternity in heaven with place that God has prepared. Let me spend eternity with Jesus and Jesus is enough, right? That's, that's enough for me. God, just thank you for getting me to where you are. But as you look at God's word and you begin to understand the character of God, you soon come to the conclusion, God wants the best for you now, of course, but he also wants the very best for you for all eternity. And so all through scripture, we see God wanting to bless his children with his good gifts, but also his heavenly rewards. So we even sing about it, right? We sing, I got a mansion just just over the hilltop, right? I got a mansion just over the... So, so we talk about that, and I know we kind of joke from time to time. I know uh, Ron particularly likes to joke about how his mansion is going to be so much nicer and bigger and kind of oceanfront than everybody else's, but that's all right. That's all right. No, we, we joke about that sort of thing, but we know, hey, again, 
I'm just happy I'm there. I really don't care, right? I just, if it's a little one room or whatever, it doesn't matter. But we know that God has some amazing things in store for those who follow him. And so don't really talk about rewards a whole lot because I think that's, that's just it. Just, hey, count me in. I'm, I'm heaven bound. And we don't want to think that we're living this Christian life uh, just because we're going to get something out of it. Right? Well, I'm going to do this for you, God. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be trusting because you're, kind of, you're going to owe me, right? That's not it. We don't demand God's blessing. We don't demand His rewards. Uh, we don't expect it, really. It's just God's goodness. It's the heart of God to give good gifts to His children. And I think if you just seek after the things of God, right? Tony's prayer, seek the face of God, seek after Him, seek after the things of God, and God will, in His goodness and His mercy and His grace, continue to bless and even give out rewards someday. Peter talks about it. Paul talks about it. Uh, John talks about rewards in heaven, and Jesus talks about rewards in heaven. And so, of course, you know, we think, well, why would God do that? And I think part of that, not all of it, but part of it is the principle that we find in the Bible about sowing and reaping. And really, it makes sense, right? Sowing and reaping is found throughout God's Word. And you understand, and I understand, that sometimes that happens fast. You reap what you sow. And so that's part of life. The decisions and choices and things that you make, <clears throat> you reap what you sow. And so it is for all eternity, right? The decisions that we make today and tomorrow until our last breath is going to affect us for all eternity. And even into eternal life, right? You reap what you sow. And so out of that reaping comes rewards. Of course, also out of that reaping comes punishment. That's another sermon for another time. want to focus on the good things, (laughs) the things that you got right. And so so we're going to talk about that specifically uh, today. The Bible does say that every one of us will be judged by God. It's just how it is. You can go to Revelation 20 and all through Scripture. Uh, we're, we're all going to be judged. We're going to be judged a little differently, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But everybody's going to be judged by a holy and righteous and fair God. Now, we're not supposed to judge, right? You. You don't judge, I don't judge. We're not supposed to be judgy toward one another. The Bible's clear about that. We're not to easily find fault. I think that's a, really a better way. We're not to easily find fault with one another, not to be so critical. I think, really, we should give people the benefit of the doubt more than just trying to look at something uh, where we can find fault. And so, yeah, we're not supposed to be judgmental, uh, but judging people in our culture now has, I don't know, it's, it's just like it's got popular for some reason. Uh, everybody's saying, you know, don't judge me, um, you can't judge me, and uh, people are now, really, I think in our culture, we, we've got a new favorite passage of Scripture. It used to be John 3.16, And now it seems like everybody's talking about John chapter 7, verse 1. And John 7, 1 says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Now, unfortunately, in my opinion, people have taken that verse way out of context. So much out of context that people will say, You can't tell me anything that I'm doing, even if it's wrong. You can't tell me. You can't judge me. You can't tell me if it's wrong. You can't say that it's wrong. Um, You can't point that out to me. In fact, you have to accept (laughs) 
and tolerate the things that I say and the things that I do. And even more than that, you have to approve and sometimes you even have to celebrate things that I'm doing wrong, right? That's kind of the culture that we live in. And so this do not judge has been taken totally out of context, but one day, <laughs> one day, God's going to judge everyone for all the deeds that they have done. And so um, we as Christians, again, we're to be discerning, not to be judgmental, but God will one day judge everyone. And so nobody's going to miss out on that. I've heard, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, people, and you've heard this too, people are so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good, right? People, so, you know, so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. Um, but really, again, I think in our world and our culture, yeah, you see that sometimes, but I think now we've kind of flipped the script on that, and I think people now are so earthly minded that they're no heavenly good. Does that make sense? The people are so caught up on the here and the now and today and tomorrow, they get caught up on all this stuff that's happening in this temporary place, in this temporary tent, and they get fixed on that and never think about all eternity forever and ever. Amen, right? Is that, and, and so that's just kind of, you know, not judging, not judging, just trying to be discerning. And so at the end of your life, here we are, we're talking about the afterlife, talking about the things that happen, right, immediately after you die. And we've already talked that if you're in Christ and you're a Christian and your sins have been forgiven, right, you go immediately into the presence of God. And so at the end of your life, if you're in Christ, your name is written down in the book of life and your eternal destiny is in heaven with the Lord. Now, if you're not in Christ... At the end of your life, you will not be found in the book of life, and your eternal destiny will be in a place prepared for the devil, separated from God for all eternity. But come judgment time, the Bible says that the books will be open. And judgment will come, and there's going to be enough evidence in those books to make a fair judgment. And for the, again, for the non-believer, not going to dwell on this too much, but for the non-believer, judgment's going to be swift, right? People's not going to have time to kind of talk their way out of it, or they're not going to have time to negotiate any terms about it. It's going to be swift. Uh, teachers, when you're doing your test and you say, hey, pencils down, pass papers forward, right? That's that's now. That's no change in the answer, no looking down, no, right? It's now. It's going to be immediately. There's not going to be any time. That's why we talk about the Great Commission. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about the Great Commission more and more over the next few weeks and months just to remind us, hey, we need to get it right now so that we will have a hope and the confidence of a future that God has planned for us. Now, for believers, again, those who have trusted in Jesus, believed in Jesus, repented, received Jesus as Lord and Savior of, of their lives, right? If you've done those things, right, and you're a child of God, you're just not going to be judged in that same way. Why? Well, because your sins have been forgiven, right? When the books are opened up, all those who rejected God and said, eh, I'm good, I don't need you. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that gift of salvation. I'm good on my own, right? The books are going to be open, and wow, there's going to be a lot of evidence to convict them of their own doing. God doesn't send people to hell, right? People say, I just reject you. I'm good on my own. But for believers, for you who have put your faith and your trust in Christ those sins are forgiven. The Bible tells us, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, 
God is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's how we're made right with God. The Bible says that when you confess sin and make Jesus leader of your life and you follow him, your sins are remembered no more. And I don't know about you, but that makes me happy. Praise God. All the mistakes and all the failures, God doesn't remember that. He's not going to put those up on the big jumbotron, right? The, the minute we die and say, well, look at this and look at this, that's not how that's going to go. Now, yeah, there's some consequences that we inherit because of our foolish decisions and choices. But God says, I'm going to remember those no more. Judgment Day ought not to frighten the Christian. Our sin is blotted out. Sin is washed away. Our sin is deleted. When you repent of that, right, and you continue to walk with Christ and just trusting and following and obeying Him. And so really, Judgment Day for the Christian should be a day of rejoicing, right? Just like the song, right? The trio saying, hey, I'm traveling light. I'm looking forward. One of these days, see, we have a hope to look forward to. And so the judgment for the Christ follower really is going to be about eternal rewards. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that's our passage scripture for today. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we're at home in the body or we're away from it, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us and the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And so you've done some things well as far as your Christian walk and your Christian life. There may be some things that you didn't do so hot, right? You've, you've knocked the ball out of the park with some stuff, but then there's some other stuff that, mm, wow, I've just struggled with that. Well, right, you're going to be rewarded based on those things some things you did well some things maybe not so well and so that's where we get that idea of different mansions right because yeah we're all going to be rewarded but not equally is that that's kind of fair to say i heard a heard about a guy who went to heaven and he was talking to peter and peter said hey uh, did you ever cheat on your wife and, and the guy said, well, no, I never did. I was always 100% faithful. And Peter said, that's right. You were always faithful. And because of that, you're going to get a brand new Lamborghini. You're going to drive a Lamborghini for all eternity around heaven. And that guy was like, yes, right? Now he's on cloud nine and he's all happy and he's driving in style the best around. The next day, the same guy, weeping, sobbing, all upset, and Peter was like, dude, yesterday you were so happy you were driving the best ride all in heaven. What's wrong? And he said, well, I just saw my wife, and she's on roller skates. So now, I know that's a bad preacher joke, but we do, we talk about that, right? Not all rewards are going to be the same. And, and sometimes we joke about that. Well, you know, you're going to have a bigger house and, and you're going to have a nicer car to drive. We understand that not everything is going to be all equal when it comes time to God giving out rewards. And, but it, there's, no, there's no jealousy. There's not going to be any envy. And so don't be going down that road. Oh, I'm going to be so mad because you got beachfront property. And that's not going to be like that at all, Right. Not going to be like that at all. So the question really is, and you think about that, okay, how are we going to be judged? What, what are we going to be judged on? What what's exactly are we going to be graded on? And, and students, you might be able to get this uh, e easily when you've probably asked a teacher or a professor uh, at some point, hey, is this going to be on the final exam, right? You've got a chart that you're supposed to memorize, and you're like, hey, is this going to be on the test? 
why do you ask that, right? You, you ask that because if the teacher says, oh no, that's not going to be on the test, right? It's gone. You're not looking at that. You're not studying that. You could care less about that chart. It's gone. But now if the teacher said, oh yeah, that's going to be on the test, right? You're locked in now. You're going to do what you can do to make sure that you're going to get a good grade. Now, obviously, I don't know what's on God's test, <laughs> and I don't know uh, exactly all the things that he's going to be judging us on and grading us on, but I do know some things that's in Scripture that tells us, and I've just marked seven of those things down, and don't worry, we're going to zip through them, okay? We're going to zip through these seven things that God wants you to get right and to, to, do, to do well, just to do your best. And in your outline, you say, number one, endurance under persecution, right? Do you stand strong when people come against you because of your faith? Do you stand firm? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice then and be glad, because, here it is, great is your reward, where? In heaven. In heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so, when you stand firm, and Jesus says, because of me, not because you've been silly or you're acting like a jerk towards people and they're, right... It's because of me. When you've been uh, insulted, when you've been pushed out, blackballed, made fun of, been called names, whatever it is, God sees that and he sees you're standing firm through that and there's rewards that come. That's why you don't have to demand justice right now. Right? When people do you wrong and, and kind of uh, mistreat you, you don't have to see justice take place today or tomorrow because you know God is going to make it right. God's going to make it right. And so the culture may get the best of you for a season. You may even get canceled for a season. But that's okay. The God of heaven will eventually make it right. And so that's why we can say, okay, no bending, no bowing, no breaking. I'm going to stand firm. Another thing God would like to see you do well in is, is financial stewardship. We've talked a lot about that before this year. It's just a giving and a generous heart, right? Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you're going to hate the one and love the other, or you're going to be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. And right before Jesus said that in Matthew 6, 19, he said, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Bottom line, God wants us to be generous, right? A giving heart. He wants us to be more, more givers than just consumers and always looking to take. Another area where God wants you to do your best and to do well is how you treat the poor and the hurting. Matthew 25, 40 says, The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. You might remember that part of that parable of Jesus that he's, 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 he's trying to teach them that how you treat people, it really, really does matter. Right? When you help people out, However that is, you're lending a hand, you see a need, and, and you're meeting needs, and, and you're really, you're trying to do some things that God sees that. And God says, I'm, I will reward that. Right? God sees that. When you see some kid getting bullied at school, and you step in, and you do something, right? God sees that. You're there to to help. When you stand up for people who really can't stand up for themselves, God sees and God rewards, right? You can't give a person a cup of water without God seeing that. Even the littlest thing, God sees. And so how you help people and when you help people is important and it matters. And it matters to God. 
God also wants you to be sincere in your faith. Um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 says, be careful, it's a warning, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. And so Jesus was talking to some people who were kind of showing off their religion, right? And so Jesus says, if you pray in secret, I will reward you, right? If you want just other people to see you do stuff that are, that's religious, well, you've already got your reward. Your reward was them seeing you do that stuff. But there's going to be no reward in heaven if you're just doing things so that other people see you doing things. A lot of you have done some things behind the scenes, right? Nobody knows. You've helped people out. You've been generous. Nobody knows. You've helped build the kingdom. You've done some things for the church, for the kingdom of God. You've done some things for other people. Nobody knows about it. God does. And God says, I will bless you and I will reward you for those things. Another thing that God wants you to do well in is, did you love the hard to love? Did you love, and are you loving, the hard to love? You ever hear someone say, oh man, she is so sweet, there's just going to be all kinds of jewels in her crown. You ever hear that? People say that? Wow, she's going to have a bunch of jewels. Why do they say that? They say that because she's had to put up with some stuff, right? She's had to put up with some stuff over the years. And you could say the same thing about a feller. Hey, he's going to have a bunch of jewels in his crown. And we say that because you know that he's been through some stuff. He's put up with some stuff. Jesus said when you're loving, when it's hard to love, when you're patient, when it's really hard to be patient, right? When you take a breath and kind of calm down, when you just want to let them have it, Jesus said there's, there's blessings there, there's rewards there. Luke chapter 6, verse 27, he says, But to you who are listening, I say to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And then he goes on in verse 35 and says, when you do those things, great is your reward. And so I get it, you know, right now today, um, you may be like, wow, <laughs> I got some people in my life who are really, really hard to love. And don't, don't look at them now. They may be in here, but you say, I've got some people who are just really, really difficult to love and hard to love. Uh, and it's not just the sandpaper people that we talk about, right? Those are people who just kind of rub you the wrong way. And you can usually get away from But when you have people close to you that's just difficult to get along with and difficult to love, and that may be where you are now, um, it's hard. It's hard to love them. It's hard to pray for them. It's hard to bless them. And so I would just say your prayer today needs to be along the lines of, Holy Spirit, give me what I do not have. Right? Give me what I do not have. Give me love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. Give me self-control. Give me those things that I just, do, I just don't possess right now. And so I need your help. Another thing that God wants you to do well in is endurance and suffering. First um, Peter chapter 1 says, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Right? Lots of suffering, lots of trials. And these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So when Jesus comes back, 
right? He's going to say to a bunch of you, well done. You've had to endure some suffering and some infliction and just well done. Sometimes life's not fair. Sometimes life's not fun. And for some of you, you get that right right now. Life may not be fair and it may not be fun. And your prayer has been, I just want all that stuff to go away, right? When trials and difficulties and when life's not fair and when life's not fun, usually <clears throat> one of two things happen. Those things will either drive a person far away from God, right? God, I'm mad at you. You've allowed these things to happen in my life, and so now I'm mad. Or they will drive you straight to God, and you will say to God, God, I need you. I can't do this, life not fair, life not fun. I can't do this without you, so God, help me. Those are the two different paths that people take. Mad at God or run to God. And the final thing, as we kind of close with these rewards, is did you... Did you get it done? Um, I get this from Ephesians 2.10, the passage that, that Jim read at our call to, to, to worship passages this morning. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God made you for a reason. He's given you a purpose. He's, given you, he's, he's made you special and valuable, and he's, he's saved you for a, a reason, a purpose. And so the question is, are you living that out? Are you building your life on, on him? Uh, it's really an opportunity for you to let your light shine for Christ, share the message of the hope that you have, right? You have a, a, an opportunity right where you are, no matter where you're at, to be a, a missionary, right? You're, the place where you're at is just a mission field. And so tell somebody about Jesus. Don't be ashamed of the gospel, but are you... Are you getting some things done that, that God has called you to do in just letting people know that God has been good to me Amen. and uh, I believe that God is good to you too. And so um, I know this morning we, we started by singing that song. There's a, there's a new name in glory. How many remember that song? You remember singing that song? It's been a while since we sang that song here, but there's a new name in glory, and hey, it's mine, right? It's mine. It's yours. A new name in glory, and right? And, and I just say, yeah, thank you, Jesus, not because of me, right? We're not all that, but Jesus is. And so when you come to faith in Christ, right? name written down, written down and I'm reminded that you know all this talk of heaven and, and rewards and blessings it's it's not going to happen if your name's not written down right in glory and so that's why we we at some point say hey let's get that done today right get your name written down in glory repent confess of sin Make Jesus leader of your life. Let you believe in the person and the work of Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, dying for your sins and the sins of the world. And we just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are enough. Don't need all these extra rewards that you're going to divvy out to your children. Thanks. But Jesus is enough.